talking today with people who say they are obsessed and in some cases in love with serial killers and murderers. And then you've met some of the uh, family, some of the victims. Now meet Hart. Hart publishes serial killer comic books. Uh, this one, Boneyard Press, Spreading the Fear in 92. And he says that violent crimes happen all the time and his comic books don't add to the problem. This is a Jeffrey Dahmer. Is it a Jeffrey Dahmer edition of yeah. the comic books? Are, have there been more than one, or is this it? Uh, there's been a few other serial killer comics that I've done, yes. You've heard uh, the parents of two of Dahmer's victims. You have given us a quote that says, um, why don't they just, why don't Shirley and Catherine just go home and heal instead of spending their time talking to the media? Do you, why yeah, do you feel I... that Shirley and Catherine, Catherine should not have talked to us. Uh, basically, the only reason they're here is so you can profit directly on their pain live while it happens right here. No, That's no, the only reason the they're here. Problem, no, you I brought them here for one you reason. You're the one that's profiting. No, she's not no, profiting. No, no, I'm not, not profiting pain. anything. She's making thousands and thousands of dollars by you crying on TV, <laughs> suffering on TV. I did a comic book well, about a killer as a journalistic exercise. You must know that I work for a company. That we do not yeah, like your company. comic book. The whole talk show industry is based on festering wounds. You take people, you exploit them right there. Shouldn't That's what you're really talk. interested in, Sally. Huh? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is me, the THC D-O-double-G, Christopher Pelton, here on the Horror Connection Live. And with me today, I have an amazing guest, uh, an extremely talented writer and all around super swell human being. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you folks to Casey Hill. Casey, say hey to the fans at home. Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, I think uh, I think things are good out there in the world today. So uh, tell me a little bit about what you got going on, Casey. What, what are you up to today? Um, today, well... I have a few people reading through my latest short story that I finished called The Stab the Stones. It was a piece for a uh, drug addiction anthology that I was excluded from. And um, I got a lot of people that when I was asking where I could sub it to, they were like, you should do your own anthology. So now I'm doing my own anthology called The Devil's Playground and all proceeds from it will be donated to a charity that uh deals with drug addiction and helps people get into drug rehab outstanding and this is a delightful cover uh who uh who did the cover art i did oh i love it love it i love the creepy hand that's tight very <laughs> tight dig it thank you so um what's the uh what's the plan how, how many writers how many what are you what are you thinking Oh, I don't know. I had uh, uh, quite a few people commenting on the post. Uh, some submissions already sent in, and a lot of them saying that they're working on a piece. Um, I'm, uh, right around 20 people so far nice. have said that they're interested. Very nice. Very nice. So that sounds like it's happening uh, in, a, in a very positive way. And we also have... <laughs> this one, which again, I love the cover. Is that again your work? Yes, that's me. I love it. Love that flower. Oh my God. Uh, and that one is an eco horror anthology. <laughs> yes. Uh, which there's been a lot of fascinating uh, back and forth on. Uh, so how did you get started in this crazy game, Casey? What was your, what was your horror pop in the horror cherry, so to speak? <laughs> um, like in the beginning, like yeah. all the way to the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I came into horror and I'll say horror because when I say it the proper way, um, I say, it sounds like it says whore instead. <laughs> <So> <laughs> I compensate that with my accent. Fair enough. I, fair enough. <laughs> in 2016, um, I came into the industry, uh, fresh. Like, mm -hmm. I knew nobody. So, a bunch of people sent me friend requests. And one of those friend requests ended up being a publisher. Nice. And I wrote my first technical horror story. Um, when I was in high school, I had written a couple of them um, that are actually in my Tales from the Crib anthology. Nice. But uh, this was my actual, like, foray into the horror industry. And it was Gabler's Asylum of the Damned. 
where it's a, a boy who is trying to remember his past because he has complete amnesia and he knows for a fact that he was in an sanitarium that uh, most people know it's based off of a real sanitarium in Connecticut, uh, Gabler Sanatorium. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of kids that were either having mental health issues, drug issues, or they were just orphans were placed in this place. So right. he was an orphan and he was placed here. And it turns out that his father is actually the literal devil. So his father is trying to get him to raise him into earth by slaughtering the children in the orphanage. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> um, and how did that go over? How was it accepted uh, by the by the It was accepted movie? by the publisher. Uh, it went into Busted Lip Anthology. And um, this end, this company ended up becoming my company later on after the publisher didn't want to do anything with it anymore because I was okay. also an editor for the company. So he gave me the company and uh, that was Fat Lip Press. And mm-hmm. then I rebranded it into Jaded Books Publishing the same year. Nice. And I've went through several other companies where I have been co-owner and then I ended with dark moon rising publications as mine and only mine. No other people have their hands in it. Awesome. Awesome. I I find that uh, when there's too many people involved and and this is a lesson I learned the hard way myself. um, When there's, when there's too many people and with too many hands involved, you lose focus. Yes. Worried about like I found myself my time I found being used to make sure that everybody else was doing all right and things were slipping. And so looking back on it, how things were when we started in the beginning, when it was just me or one or two other people and we were doing everything. Um, it's nice to get back to that feeling now that I'm just working with one writer at a time uh, or I'm working with, you know, doing stuff that I you know, that I'm working on for whatever other projects. Um, have you found that, What's your what's your experience as a as a publisher? Um, is your one on one situation? Do you like to have multiple projects going at the same time? Like like what's your speed? Um, as the person that solely handles like everything, because I don't even have editors. I'm the editor. I'm the publisher. I'm mm-hmm. the I'm the everything there. So um, if you have more than just a couple of them, it's, it tends to get very overwhelming. So, um, projects like this is my first technical actual project of my own that Mm -hmm. I have, um, put together this year. I've been sick for a few years, so I've been away from publishing. Sure. And this one is the first one I've done by myself. Um, I've accepted people who have compiled, the ones that are compiling it. Like I have one right now, Nature's Triumphs, which is Mm -hmm. another eco horror anthology that's for charity that, um, Allison Armstrong is uh, handling uh, the submissions, the edits and everything. And all it's doing is being published through me. So that makes it very, very much easier on my life Mm -hmm. as opposed to me handling everything 100%. Oh yeah. It's, it gets tricky because like when we launched this uh, submission call for the first magazine, I had 130 submissions come in and it was just me reading them all. So, yeah, <laughs> so it, yeah. it was like, well, it's, it's nice to have folks around, but at the same, like I missed a lot of things I know. Um, so now the focus is back and it, it, it feels really good. Now I know that you have just recently, where'd it go? Come on. I just had it. There it is. Tell me about the devil's claw. Devil's claw is a story focused around, um, land in Virginia. It's actually based off the property that my family has owned for like the last like 30 years or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And the land is haunted. (laughs) So the haunting, the ghosts and everything, they're like legit in there. Like they're not as extreme as I make it out, but like the family (laughs) backstory and everything in there is, it's pretty spot on for it. Um, The last descendant owns the property and he has made it into a a resort type campground for people to come to and camp. Nice. Um, It has a lake set up, which is total fabrication. I don't have a lake on my property, (laughs) (laughs) but it has a, uh, it has a lake set up and everything. And um, it 
has multiple side stories that interweave with one another. It has him and his story, the campground, and then it focuses on a couple that is going to the campground with their children. Nice. And um, the focus of the children in the story is because the couple of the ghosts are actually ghost children. And they're talking to the youngest and telling her everything about the place and everything. Then another side story is the uh, the basis of the land is uh, it was Native American land a long time ago. And it was abandoned because the land turned into not sour land like right. Stephen King put it. But it was cursed land where instead of how nature has a natural vibration of outward energy it became a suction of energy and a vortex of energy and it just absorbed and sucked all the lives from the native americans that were there to where they were like desiccated corpses but by the time they died so they abandoned the land and a few hundred years later the, white people. <laughs> yes, white people from Ireland come and they find this land and they're warned by the tribes around the like, No, no, not this land. They're like, we're taking it anyway. It's fine. <laughs> and that is how it they disturb the land. They disturb every spirit that's died there. And the central focus of the reason why is because there is a raven mocker from Cherokee mythology raven mockers are evil witches that are invisible and cannot be seen and they eat the heart out of their victims without leaving a mark so like when they would do their autopsies of people their heart would be missing right but but no evidence evidence. no evidence whatsoever and the only way to get rid of a raven mocker is um the uh medicine man has to stand guard for like seven nights around this person to ensure and keep away the Raven mocker because they're the only ones that can actually see them for who they are. Very cool. Yes. So the Raven mocker is terrorizing the land in the past and in the present. Very nice. Very nice. Now is this um, like King has castle rock and like, when I write a lot of my stories take place in a small Connecticut town. Do you have a, a similar place where you like to play like the woods? I mean, this, the woods sound terrifying. I can see, you know, a hundred different stories coming out of there. Is that, is that something that you can see yourself in the future coming back to that? Oh yes, actually I plan on making this series, a full series about Foxwood and the Foxwood Hill section, but mm-hmm. I have a young adult series too called, the Whispering Spirits that has the haunting at Foxwood Village and then Dark Coven in it. And it's based on the other half of the land that is owned by a different type family. And it has the same ghosts and everything that intermingle the stories. And so I'm bringing that storyline into this storyline with the next book, um, The Haunting of Foxwood Manor. Nice. Very nice. I love it when it all comes together like that. Uh, We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. back so Casey um one of the things that I, I love to ask authors uh because I know what it felt like for me uh 
you've created something, you, you've willed something into creation by just the sheer power of your mind. You, you write the book, you edit the book, you go through all the steps. And then that day comes where the box comes in the mail or the envelope comes in the mail and you rip that open for the first time. What was that feeling like for you? It's like Christmas. Like it's adult Christmas. It I, actually, I kind of, I, I find it, it's a bit better than Christmas because with Christmas, you know, it's unexpected gifts and you don't know if you're going to like them or not, but I know that I'm going to like what's in that box. <laughs> it's to, to, it, it, it creates permanence and, you know, no matter what happens, you wrote that book. Those words are in existence now. They, they live because you've read life into them. Um, and no matter what goes, you know, nothing can change that. And that's I, the act of creation. It's, it's one of the reasons why I love working with writers and artists because to see the, the genesis of an idea and, and to be able to follow along with people as they, as they create whatever their end goal is. Um, it's just remarkable. Uh, who have you, um, who in the industry now, you've been around for a little while. Um, who have you found have, have been a, a pleasure to work with? Like, like who, who, who have you met along the line? They'd be like, yeah, that person's really cool. I want to go back and work with them. Like any, any like bestie kind of situations arise? Um, Extina Marie over at Hellbound Books, um, mm. me and her are actual, actual besties. <laughs> nice. But I was the first one to publish her. I published her first poetry book, the Dark uh, Musings book, and then Light Musings came after that. Nice. And uh, she's an absolute delight in her poetry. I absolutely adore. Like, I have every single copy of every poetry book she's ever released. I fangirl over her. Right on, right on. Um. Another one that I initially published was Michael Gnome. I yeah. have worked with Michael since 2016. He's currently got an unread message in my messenger box asking if I've read his submission yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, there have been several people that not necessarily that I've published myself, but like Carver Pike is one of them that mm -hmm. uh, I've known him since 2016 as well. Um, mm -hmm. Under his other name, Christian Aviz is where I met him. Mm -hmm. uh, I met him in a poetry anthology that I was hosting and uh, we clicked with that. So we've been pretty good friends since then. Mm -hmm. I was in the horror authors carnival with him when he had that, going on and um gosh there's so many people that like when you're put on the spot it's just hard to yeah. remember every name <laughs> that's on your friends list that you're like they would be so mad if i didn't say their name <laughs> i uh, i i find that uh when when the when the the horror community is at our best uh we are welcoming we are accepting we are supportive of each other um, I think a lot of that stems from being, you know, the the weirdos when we were growing up, or being the outcasts, right. or the or the yeah. freaks and the misfits. Um, it's very hard to look at somebody and be like, oh, well, this person is is horrible because of this, when none of us are, you know, I, I mean, we're 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 good people, but I mean, we're horror people. So there's there's obviously right. there's some things fucked up with us, <laughs> um, you know. But it's I, I've had the I've had the pleasure. Uh, over the last year of, of meeting a lot of people and uh, some of them, like when we talk, I know you get it, you know, like I know you understand how the business goes and, and what, mm -hmm. what we can do and what we should do. Um, and then, you know, sometimes there's other people who don't get it and that's okay. You know, everybody will find their path in life. Um, so you've got these anthologies happening. Um, what else is on your agenda for this year? Are you getting out at all? Any conventions, shows coming up or? I am going to Eddie Fest this weekend for mm -hmm. a vendor show. It's a rock fest that is um, a, a charity function for kidney disease and everything like that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that the uh, the person that it's in honor of passed away because of his kidney issues. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll be there with all my books, uh, a few other goodies. One of my friends is trying to talk me into doing my baked goods since I've been in this baking right on. phase right now. <laughs> but uh, I'll be there with all my books for anybody who, who stops in. And hopefully I can get some new fans. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I like 
play a little game with every time I have somebody on, I'm gonna ask you five random questions. No oh, longer God. go think. <laughs> All righty. First question. If dogs wore pants, two legs or four legs? I have to go with two legs. Two legs. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, if you're you're sitting on death row, what is your last meal? Everything I'm not allowed to eat right now because of my meal. <laughs> <laughs> Steak, hamburgers with actual beef, pork chops. All right. I what? Drink like a huge glass of milk, eat all kinds of ice cream, like everything. I'm like, I just eat a stick of butter. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, faster, slow zombies. That I like or I dislike. If you were in a zombie situation, which would you prefer? A slow zombie, of course. Like I can <laughs> run away from a slow. I'm slow running, so of course I need a slower zombie than what okay. I am. All right, it's all about cardio there. So you don't have to. Be, and remember, yeah. you don't have to be faster than the zombies. You just have to be faster than your friend. Right. That's usually right. Yeah. <laughs> um, all time. Who's your favorite cartoon character? Uh, cartoon character. Oh, good God, Almighty. Captain Planet. Captain Planet. Outstanding. Captain Planet. He's our hero. <laughs> and, uh, the last question. The last question I ask everybody: uh, When you're at the grocery store, Casey Hill, can you reach the top shelf? Yes, I can. I'm proud of that fact too. My husband can't. <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. So, uh, where can we find you online? You can find me anywhere as long as it's at uh, at Casey Hill Author, right. TikTok, right. Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, it's all at Casey Hill Author, Casey Hill Author .com, Casey Hill Author .wordpress.com. Anywhere you type in Casey Hill Author, I'll pop up, even on Amazon. Everywhere we want her to be. Casey, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, absolute pleasure. I, I love speaking to you. Uh, I'm excited about the anthologies. Let's see if something rattles around in my brain. Maybe I'll have something for you. Um, I wish you the best of luck with the, with the new book. I can't wait to read. I'll have to pick up a copy of this because I love the idea. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Uh, keep doing covers because, I mean, this, the, I, I, <laughs> I love, I mean, that, 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 I love that. That, that, that is amazing. Um, so, yeah, keep doing what you do because you are amazingly gifted. You're one of the nicest people I've had the pleasure to meet. And uh, I look forward to, to hopefully working with you in the future and we can do some amazing stuff. We will. I'll keep, I'll hold you to that too. I, I'm, I'm around. I'm the easiest person to find. I'm not nearly as scary as everybody seems to think I am. Um, so folks, we're going to go out on a last ad break. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and uh, have some more fascinating conversations with some more fascinating people. Casey, again, thank you so much for your time and uh, folks have a pleasant day.